Meraki TV is proudly brought to you by George Focus of Focus Beyond. Education for investing wisely. everyone and welcome to Meraki TV brought to you by George Focus of Focus Beyond Education for Investing Wisely. I'm Anna Savo and so glad to have your company. On the show tonight we have British Greek actress Irini Mo chatting to Billy Kotsis. Highlights from the recent Vasilakos concert here in Sydney. George is in the kitchen making incredibly delicious cookies with a very sneaky healthy surprise and we cover Cronus and the beginning of the universe according to ancient Greek mythology. First up on the show tonight though is an absolute legend of Greek music, Dimitris Basis, a deep, rich voice in a body of honour, integrity and pure sweetness. He came out here recently for a very low-key tour, the object being to play to the most remote Greek communities, to bring the essence of Greece to those who usually miss out. Maria Kochlastu was lucky enough to sit and chat with this awesome talent. Δημήτρη, καλησπέρα και καλώ ήρθε και πάλι στην Αυστραλία. Καλώ σα βρίσκω. Ευχαριστώ πολύ που τα λέμε τηλεοπτικά. Λοιπόν, φέτο έχει ταξιδέψει ακόμα λίγο πιο μακριά στη Νέα Ζηλανδία. Παίξαμε την προηγούμενη εβδομάδα στο Wellington σε μια συναυλία που νομίζω ότι θα τη θυμόμαστε όλοι μα για πολλά χρόνια. Ενώ αυτοί που παρευρέθηκαν στο Wellington, αλλά και εμεί οι επισκηνεί, εγώ με του μουσικού μου. Γιατί πραγματικά ζήσαμε στιγμές ε, απίθανες. Ε, ε, σκοπός μου είναι να μπορέσω να πάω ε, όπου υπάρχει ελληνισμός, ακόμα και εκεί που δεν έχει πάει ποτέ κανείς Έλληνας καλλιτέχνης, ακόμα και εκεί που ε, υπάρχει πολύ μολύ μικρή κοινότητα ή δεν υπάρχει καθόλου κοινότητα αλλά υπάρχουν Έλληνες. Εγώ θέλω να πάω με τους μουσικούς μου και να παίξω για αυτούς. Ένα μεγάλο ευχαριστώ στους συνεργάτες μου εδώ στο στην Αυστραλία ε, και στην Νέα Καρτέρη που έχει βοηθήσει πάρα πολύ για αυτή την φετινή περιοδία. Είναι μια μεγάλη περιοδία. Ε, ξεκίνησε από το Πέρθ. Ο επόμενος σταθμός ήταν η Νέα Ζηλανδία και το Κουέλιγκτον. Συνεχίζουμε σε Μελβούρνη, ε, Καμπέρα, Πρίσμπαν, Αδελαίδα. Λοιπόν, τώρα είναι 20 χρόνια που τραγουδάς Πέρυσι έκλεισα 20 χρόνια, τα οποία τα γιόρτασα στην Αθήνα με μια πολύ μεγάλη συναυλία που κάλεσα τους φίλους μου να συμμετέχουν σε αυτή τη συναυλία. Άρα φέτος είμαστε 21 χρόνια. Τα 20 χρόνια ήταν πέρυσι, τα χρόνια περνάνε πολύ γρήγορα. Ωραία. Αν μπορείς να μας ταξιδέψεις λίγο από όταν ξεκίνησε γιατί ξεκίνησε πολύ μικρός. Έως τώρα. Μεγάλωσα σε ένα χωριό. Οι καταρχήν οι γονείς μου ήταν μετανάστες, ήταν στη Γερμανία 20 χρόνια και επιστρέψαμε οικογενειακό στην πατρίδα για πάντα, <coughs> όταν εγώ ήμουν 7,5 χρονών. Ε, άρεσε να ανακαλύπτω την ε, βυζαντινή μουσική, γιατί η γιαγιά μου μέσα στην εκκλησία και εκεί μέσα ανακάλυψα, ε, πήγαινα να κρατώ το ξαπτέρυγα και εκεί ανακάλυψα τη μαγεία της ε, βυζαντινής μουσικής και είχα κατασταλάξει και καταλήξει ότι από πολύ μικρός ότι α, α, αυτό που θέλω να κάνω στη ζωή μου είναι αυτό, να ασχοληθώ με το τραγούδι. Και πώς ήρθε η πρώτη ευκαιρία. Ε, Άρα έψαχνα να βρω μια ευκαιρία, ξεκίνησα να τραγουδάω από, ε, το, από ένα μαγαζί στο Κλικής. Πολύ γρήγορα πήγα στη Θεσσαλονίκη και εκεί στη Θεσσαλονίκη με, με άκουσε ο Σταμάτης Καραουνάκης και μου πρότεινε να κατέβω στην Αθήνα να με ακούσει η Άλκηση Πρωτοψάλτη. Τρία χρόνια με την ομάδα της Άλκησης Πρωτοψάλτη ήταν αρκετά για να πάρω γνώσεις αλλά και να με ανακαλύψει ε, ο Χρήστος Νικολόπουλος όπου μου έδωσε 
ε, τα πρώτα μου τραγούδια, έκανε, συμμετείχε στις πρώτες μου δισκογραφικές δουλειέ. Κάναμε ένα soundtrack, το ψήθρι καρδιάς, που ήταν η αιτία να με μάθει όλος ο κόσμος και να κάνει μια μεγάλη, μια τεράστια επιτυχία. Ε, και σιγά σιγά άρχισα να, να, ε, να ξετυλίγεται αυτό το, η διαδρομή μου, η μουσική, με πολύ σημαντικές συνεργασίες. Ε, και κάπου το 1999 ε, γνωρίζομαι με τον Μίκη Θοδωράκη. Ε, Πολύ γρήγορα ο Μίκης με το που με γνώρισε ε, ε, μου πρότεινε να κάνουμε τον πρώτο δίσκο που ήταν ένα έργο του, το τραγούδι του νεκροαδερφού το οποίο έργο το τραγούδι του νεκροαδερφού για πρώτη φορά κυκλοφόρησε σε δίσκο με τη φωνή του Γρηγόρη Μπηθηκότηση το 1961 αλλά επειδή τότε λόγω πολιτικών καταστάσεων κάποια τραγούδια λογοκρίθηκαν του απαγορεύσανε το 1961 με τη φωνή του Γρηγόρη Μπηθηκότηση κάποια τραγούδια να μπουν στο δίσκο. Οπότε το 2001, 40 χρόνια μετά, ο Μίκη ήθελε πια να βγάλει το δίσκο αυτό ολοκληρωμένο με τη φωνή μου. Οπότε το τραγούδι του νεκρού αδερφού κυκλοφόρησε ολοκληρωμένο πια και είχα την τιμή να είμαι επιλογή του Μίκη να τραγουδήσω ε, το έργο του. Μεγάλη ευθύνη. Ε, μεγάλη τιμή, μεγάλη ευθύνη. Ε, Αμέσω μετά από ένα χρόνο κάναμε άλλον ένα δίσκο. Ήταν πάλι πανεκτέλεση ερωτικών τραγουδιών του Μίκη. Από τότε συνεργάστηκα με τη Λαϊκή Ορχήστρα για πάρα πολλά χρόνια, τη Λαϊκή Ορχήστρα Μίκη Σοδωράκη, ταξιδεύοντα σε όλο τον κόσμο, ε, κάνοντα συναυλίε υπό τη διεύθυνση του ίδιου του Μίκη, να είναι επισκηνή και να διευθύνει την ορχήστρα του και του τραγουδιστέ του. Και η τελευταία συναυλία που ποτέ ο Μίκη διεύθυνε την ορχήστρα του ήταν το 2003 στο Ηρόδιο, όταν κάναμε το τραγούδι του Νεκροαδερφού. Έκανα μέχρι τώρα 13 προσωπικού δίσκου, έχω ταξιδέψει όλο τον κόσμο. Ε, ξεκίνησα με Άλεξη Πρωτοψάλτη, με Χάρη Αλεξίου, με Δήμητρα Γαλάνη, με Γιώργο Νταλάρα. Ε, για πάρα πολλά χρόνια συνεργασία με τον με το, με το Δημήτρη Μητροπάνο, τον Μπασχάλη Τερζή. Με του τραγουδιστέ τη γενιά μου έχω συνεργαστεί σχεδόν με όλου, με τον το Γιάννη Κότσιρα, με την Ελένη Τσαλικοπούλου, με τον Κωστά Μακεδόνα, με τον Μανώλη Λιδάκη. Ε, υπάρχει μια διαδρομή πάρα πολύ πλούσια. Ε, στον τελευταίο μου δίσκο ε, συμμετέχει και ο Θάνος Μικρούτσικος, ένα συνθέτη που εκτιμώ και πάντα ήθελα να συνεργαστώ μαζί του και αυτό έγινε στον προηγούμενο δίσκο, συγγνώμη, στον τελευταίο, ναι, στον τελευταίο, συγγνώμη. Ε, υπάρχει μια, ξέρεις, καμιά φορά που κάνω τον απολογισμό μου, λέω, εντάξει, έχουν γίνει σπουδαία πράγματα. Δημήτρη, ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ που ήρθες και πάλι στην Αυστραλία να σε δούμε από κοντά. Εγώ ευχαριστώ Α. για την αγάπη σας, που μου δώσατε την ευκαιρία να πω πέντε πράγματα στο κοινό. Και ευχόμαστε σύντομα να σας έχουμε πάλι εδώ. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Να είστε καλά. Γεια σας, είμαι ο Δημήτρης Μπάσης και βλέπετε Μεράκι TV. It's time for an income breakthrough. To free yourself from working for money, have your money work for you. George Focus of Focus Beyond will show you step by step how to generate income from the share market irrespective of if it goes up or down. Access resources that do the hard work for you and devote no more than 60 minutes a month so you can enjoy financial freedom and time with family. To change your life forever, go to focusbeyond.com now. Hello everybody, welcome back to my cuisine. Today we're going to make a magnificent recipe, wait for it, making biscuits with revithia, chickpeas. The biscuits are actually called biscotta di scalamatas. You've got to try them at home, they are easy to do and are an easy way to get your kids to eat the ospria, the chickpeas, without even realising they're doing it. All we need, if you're lucky enough to have one of these little food processors in your home, this is the hardest part of it, taking that lid off. And what we've got here, we have some chickpeas. Then over here, we've got the rice malt syrup. The beauty of this recipe is that it is not overly sweet and it is, you know, it's full of goodness. So you can have that sweet fix without worrying about overdoing it with the fermides, okay? So, and actually 
for the full recipe, I'm going through the, um, the ingredients now, but if you want to get the full recipe, be sure to go onto Meraki TV's website. In amongst it now, we have some magnificent almond butter. With the almond butter, I use the 100% almonds that are crushed. It's good for you, absolutely magnificent. Then what we have here is the coconut oil. We'll just add that in. Natayachometo baking powder. And then we have some vanilla extract, so vanilla essence. Just gives it that little bit of a vanilla flavor. This is the best part. We've got our mixing bowl here. We've got our food processor. Put the lid on. We just blitz that together so that that combines really, really well. We're going to put the mixture into the mixing bowl. And then what we can do is fold through. We have our sika, our dried figs that we've chopped up nicely and coarsely. We put those in amongst it as an optional extra, which I think gives it that little bit of sweetness because these biscuits are not sweet at all. Dark chocolate buttons. If you'd like to get some good quality dark chocolate buttons, that complements the sika really, really well. Now we just fold that mixture over, combine it well, get ourselves a couple of kutalia, a couple of spoons. Then you get yourself a baking tray with paper. I've lined it with that greaseproof paper. And you can see that's a nice mixture that holds together beautifully. You can just put together. It's mixed well. Put the cookies. Just rustic. Nice rustic looking. The best part about this recipe is that it's low mess. You can see there's hardly any mess. Easy to wash up. Nutritious. Fantastic. Tastes brilliant. And for those of you that like your sweets but don't like things to be overly sweet, I guarantee you try them. You'll love them. Your kids will love them. Your parents will love them. Your neighbours will love them. Everyone will love them. These are ready to go. I've got the oven preheating at 180 degrees centigrade. I'm going to put them in there for about 12 to 15 minutes. They'll be cooked. Take them out and then you enjoy. El latte. Look at that. Perfect biscotta de scalamata. Stora. You can let them sit for a little bit so that they cool down so they're ready to take off. Or if you, yeah, at the moment you notice they're a little bit soft. If you give them, you can either put them on a cooling rack or leave them on the tray for about 10-15 minutes and they will harden. At the moment they're a bit they move around a bit. So rather than destroy them, let them cool down, they harden up that little bit and they're perfect to handle. So we'll just be a little bit patient. Okay, now the patience has paid off. Uh, 10 minutes have passed. The biscotta have come together beautifully. They've hardened up that little bit. Look at that. They're holding, oh mate, magnificent. Nicely stacked. So, pedia, try them at home. Get your cafe daki. Give a bit of gala for the pedia to vutixi, like we used to do the kulurakia. And enjoy the biscotta de scalamatas. Oh. Seriously, do it. This is perfect. Perfect. religion and culture on this planet has a theory as to how the world began. Tonight we cover the ancient Greek version. In the beginning there was chaos, the great nothingness that ruled the universe. Then Gaia, goddess of earth, sprang into existence. She was so full of fertility that she gave birth to two other gods all alone. Uranus, Uranos, god of heaven, and Pontos, god of the ocean. Gaia then mated with Uranus and gave birth to many children, monsters and titans. Uranus felt a great deal of disgust for some of the children his wife gave him, so he locked them up in his uncle, Tartarus, the underworld, far below the surface of Gaia. Another of Gaia's children, Cronus, was not happy about his brothers and sisters' fates, so he fought his father to free Gaia's children and overcame him. 
Cronus then proceeded to overthrow his father and claim the universe as his own. Hypocritically, he then put his six younger brothers back into the underworld, greatly angering his mother Gaia. Cronus married his sister Rhea. As time went on though, Cronus feared his children would do to him as he had done to his father, and so he ended up hating them as much as his father had hated his. Subsequently, out of his fear, Cronus began eating each of his children as soon as they were born. After the fifth child, Rhea could take no more, and instead of offering up the child, she cleverly swaddled up rocks and boulders for Cronus to eat and saved the child from being eaten. She named the child Zeus and took him to Crete to be raised in secrecy. When Zeus grew up, he married Matisse, said to be the wisest being that had ever lived. Matisse told Zeus about a divine potion that could force Cronus to vomit up the children he had swallowed. Armed with the potion, Zeus travelled to his father's home and camouflaged himself as his drink bearer, secretly slipping the drug into Cronus's cup. Soon after, Cronus began retching up the children he'd eaten, Poseidon, Hades, Hera, Demeter and Hestia. Zeus grabbed the siblings and quickly escaped. This sparked the beginning of the massive 10-year war between the Titans and the Olympians, which saw Zeus rescue the Cyclopses from the underworld. So grateful were they that they fashioned gifts for the Olympians. Zeus, a lightning bolt, Hades, a helmet of invisibility, and Poseidon, a massive trident. Once the Olympians defeated the Titans, they divided up the universe. Zeus, the sky, Hades, the underworld, and Poseidon, the oceans and the seas. At Eremia Multicultural Home Care Services, we speak your language. Our people communicate with you and your family in your own language, in your own home. Eremia is a government approved aged care provider of home, personal respite, nursing and palliative care, social support, domestic assistance, garden and home maintenance and pet care. You can also talk to us about accessing government funded home care. Call 1300 118 or visit www.eremia.com.au. AussieSkips.com.au Fast, reliable, professional and friendly service. Bin sizes from 2 cubes to 12 delivered to your door the very next day so you can get your jobs done when you want. And with our own waste transfer station in Sydney's Metropolitan Strathfield, we'll find a boutique solution for your waste management needs no matter how small or large. AussieSkips.com.au Owned and loved by an Aussie family. Irini Mo was born in Greece, studied in New York and London, and is now an international actress. In amongst her jet setting, she recently added Sydney to one of her stops, and Billy Kotsis was able to sit and chat about her amazing life and career. Irini, we know you're very talented, and I've seen you, and I've met you before in London. Um, I want to know, well, there's an audience out there that wants to know how you got into acting, because a couple of things I know about you, you are born in Greece, you live in London, but you studied in New York. How did that happen? So I was born in Greece and I did some amateur dramatics at school and I really enjoyed it uh, to the point that with, uh, with one of the performances we won of the, one of the Carlos Kuhn Awards in Athens and afterwards I was living in the States and I thought I want to pursue this further so I just went to NYU for a year and that was really really good. I did a full acting degree there and then I went back to London and I continued my studies. I did uh, another year of acting at the London Centre of Theatre Studies and that was really cool and I could see the differences between acting in London, acting in New York and acting in Greece. How so? So I think the people are quite different, uh, the actors are different. In England they're a bit more reserved, um, in America and in Greece they're more outgoing, in Greece they're more artsy. Tell me about the red carpet, this is, um, this is something that I find quite interesting, so it's one of those things that you're juggling all these different talents. What's it like being on the red carpet but actually be the one asking the questions? It's fascinating because you see all those Hollywood celebrities that you see on film and TV that you've known since you were growing up and you just see them like as close as me and you at the moment. 
and you just ask questions to them about the film, their character, sometimes about you know how they find London or other related questions to that and you get to see how they interact with you, how they interact with everyone there, how, what they're like as personalities. Like I, I interviewed uh, Emma Thompson, Adam Sandler, Claire Foy, Jim Broadbent, etc. And they're just, they're just lovely, all of them. You would think they may all be stuck them? up. All it's of them. No one yeah. can actually say, listen, this is personal, this is terrible. <laughs> Stay away from them. No We're exception. happy to take names. It's okay. <laughs> Don't be afraid. This is Australia. <laughs> yeah, no exception at all. And they're actually just down-to-earth people. Like, I, I, I was not expecting that. I would expect at least someone to be big-headed, but no, they were not at all. They're very, very friendly. How are you when you're walking down the red carpet? Are you, like, pretty good with interviews? So when they're interviewing you? Yeah, yeah. Um, because I know how it is to be the interviewer and the interviewee and therefore um, I'm quite normal, I'm just like now. I'm very natural um, and I think I'm learning from all the Hollywood celebrities how they are. So I'm kind of trying to be the same as them, I would say. You mentioned Hollywood. Um, you recently were on, interviewed on radio, was it BBC One, am, am I correct? It was BBC TV BBC and ITV TV. TV. But it was, a, it was a more serious kind of topic. So it, it centred around Harvey Weinstein and uh, the Me Too campaign. How did you respond to that? What did you have to tell them? So I was approached um, from BBC and ITV to speak about the whole Harvey Weinstein scandal that was going on at, at that time. Um, I never met him, so I couldn't comment on that. But I spoke about the Me Too campaign and what I felt and what I experienced in the industry. I think what I found was that, and after speaking to a lot of actresses afterwards, was that a lot of people have been sexually harassed in one way or another. Uh, for example, with myself, I haven't been sexually harassed, but what I have experienced was that, for instance, one director asked me to do a self-tape naked. And I responded back and I said, why should I do this naked? It has nothing to do with the part that I'm playing because I applied for a mum part and there were no naked scenes because when he said that, I looked through the part and looked through the script and I was like, there are no naked scenes in there. Why do I have to do this? So I emailed back and I said, I'm so sorry, but I don't see any naked scenes. So why shall I self-tape naked? And then obviously I didn't get the part. So tell me about in the next 12 months or perhaps looking forward in the next five years, where do you think you'll be with your career? in the next five years I want to continue getting parts because that's my full-time job and luckily I can I can afford to do it full-time <laughs> so, <laughs> so I want to be able to get other parts that are equally good so be it in Greece, London, Melbourne, Sydney <laughs> or, or um, the US I don't mind I honestly don't mind. I'll see you at the BAFTA Awards. Yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping actually I have covered the BAFTA kids and the red carpet. <laughs> so I will definitely be covering that. If you see me in the red carpet, I don't know, I'm hoping. <laughs> Fantastic. Irini, good luck, all the best. Look forward to catching up with you again somewhere on this planet. Um, until then, keep shining. Thank you very much, thank you. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> Bevia, so great having your butt out tonight. Meraki TV is brought to you by George Focus of Focus Beyond Education for investing wisely. If you haven't downloaded our app yet, head to the Play Store for Android or App Store for Apple and search for Meraki TV. On the app, you'll find all information on us as well as episode replays and your favorite segments, free to all. Last weekend, our very own Crazy Con held another outstanding event with Vanasis Vasilakos, one of my personal favorites. And tonight, for those who missed out, I'm leaving you with some of the highlights. Until next week, Bidia, be like you're from me, Anna Savo. <laughs> Dios, Dios, 
Meraki TV is proudly brought to you by George Focus of Focus Beyond. Education for investing wisely.